not trying to make something that could exist anywhere else but at a particular time in a particular place made by particular people and that's going to create something that's very very unique to what's around us and is going to I think be you know relevant and meaningful in the brewing world because of that connection to to time and, and, and place what we're doing is just taking some wort allowing it to sit out overnight on one particular night of the year and allowing whatever happens to be traveling into the room on the cold night air to fall into the cool ship and inoculate the wort and cause it to ferment spontaneously. And again, by spontaneously, I mean we're not pitching yeast. We're not adding any microorganisms to the wort to make it ferment. It's just a product of what happens to be in the night air on a particular night of the year. And we take raw, unfiltered well water um, we mash it, we do a procedure called a turbid mash, which involves a number of steps and different temperatures where we're moving the grain back and forth from our mash tun to our kettle. We're using 100% Texas malt, um, but then as it matures and it spends time in these oak barrels, slowly transforming and changing quite dramatically over the long term, it goes from very kind of rough to very kind of soft and refined and has some really nice kind of uh, funk and fruit and acidity to it and almost becomes a little reminiscent of like a, like a white wine. So we start with just, just unfiltered raw hill country well water. We do a turbid mash with Texas grown malted barley, raw wheat, and then we'll do an extended boil where we boil for about four hours of time and then we take these very old, gnarly hops from our barn. You know, most beers are made with really fresh hops. Hops that are just bursting with nice grapefruit and pine and citrus and spicy and peppery characteristics. This lambic tradition that we're inspired by uh, uses aged hops. So hops that are intentionally stored at ambient temperature in the attic of our horse barn here near the brewery uh, in burlap bags where they just kind of cook during the summer months, they just sit up at the attic, like, you know, it's like 110 degrees up in the attic, and they go from bright and green and fresh and floral to kind of very wilted and brown, and they can get oxidized and funky, and they kind of take on some of the sensory characteristics of the barn, and where we're creating something that is going to be hyper unique to a particular time and a place, never to be recreated again. And, and to us, that's, that's very exciting and unique, and I think what helps kind of make Jester King relevant in the American brewing scene today is trying to create something that, that is tied to our place and our time as well as us as a people. But I think that one of the cool things about this style is it's kind of a wonderful blend of, of acidity, sourness, funk, bitterness. These are really beers that I feel can be made anywhere by anyone just so long as they're willing to have kind of the time investment and the discipline to pursue it. I mean, the process is remarkably simple. We're just taking some kind of raw, rustic grains, steeping them in water, boiling, adding these old funky hops from our barn, letting it sit out overnight, letting the microbes in the air inoculate it, and then just moving it into these barrels, and there it goes from there. We don't even touch it. We don't even look at it. I mean, we'll periodically taste it, but we just let it go from there. And the beer over time becomes much more soft and mellow and inviting and has some really wonderful aromatics and acidity that develops. And that's kind of the range in which we try to blend from. So for our first 100% spontaneously fermented beer, we took three-year-old, two-year-old, and one-year-old beer, uh, again, trying to be inspired by the process of, of Belgian goose. And the beer is going to transform remarkably from there. When we create a blend, it's not really with the idea of kind of come taste this, this static thing that we just created and you're going to taste exactly what we tasted on blending day. You're really far from it. The beer is alive. I mean, this is a style of beer that's unfiltered and it's unpasteurized and we're not adding any type of microbes to it at any point in the process, including bottling. So the beer is bottled very much alive and then we carefully place the bottles on their, their sides. I mean, one thing that kind of totally freaked me out is just we created these blends that we we're really excited about and just, just were 
couldn't believe we were able to, to, to achieve. And then, of course, the beer starts re-fermenting in the bottle and kind of goes off in a direction that, that you know, we knew it was going to happen, but it was still kind of shocking to, to experience this beer that we've just been aging for literally three years just to start to change overnight so suddenly after we created the blend and started to allow it to re-ferment. Uh, but fortunately, after about you know, nine or ten months in the bottle, which is about how long we're giving this beer prior to release, it, it really has developed, I think, some flavors that I'm extremely proud of and I'm excited to, uh, to share with, uh, with beer drinkers.